Check it out, Grand Hall or Chassis Complete. I still have to do the paint and body work, but Chassis Complete is running and drive, which is cool. It was a really easy kit to build. To my kits have always been really easy. They have very clear instructions. All the parts are labeled and bagged really nicely. So Tamaya has always been an awesome kit to put together. There are a couple things that I wouldn't say I don't like, but I think could be a little better in my opinion. And I'll show you those in a second, but there were a couple really awesome surprises. So I'll start with the awesome stuff. So if you look at the box right here, those are called full fenders. The fenders that just cover the rear wheels. I've never been a big fan of those. I don't know, they're okay I guess, but I've never been a big fan of those full fenders. I just always like the quarter fenders better. They're just, I don't know, I just think they look tougher. So I was trying to figure out a way to make my own quarter fenders, see if I could buy them, but lo and behold, the kit came with quarter fenders. So that's cool. These look just like the ones I have on my full-size truck, made by a company called Hoge Built. They make the best ones. Also came with the same style mud flap hangers I have on my truck. I don't know how I feel about the T-bar. This part's the T-bar right here. I guess it's pretty cool, but I might change that. I don't know. Who knows? We'll see. Let's see if I can find some pictures of my full-size truck so we can do a little comparison. Here's a good picture right here. This is from a display show I did last summer. It was like a charity event. It was really cool. I like doing stuff like that. I'll zoom in a little bit. So right here you can see the tire is real close to the bumper. And this is a box end bumper too right here. This corner right here is what they call the box end because it's squared off. On the grand hauler, this comes way back to here. And this axle is set way back. And there's still a lot of room. So I'll probably definitely be moving that axle forward. Also, another thing, if you take a look, if you see the placement of this fender, this truck is an extended hood. Peterbilt offered a standard hood and an extended hood. And an extended hood, if you look at this piece right here, this, this little bit of material, on an extended hood, you got this piece right here. If this were a standard hood, this fender would come right back to that back edge, be pretty much in line with that air cleaner. So the grand hauler is proportioned like an extended hood, but on the grand hauler, because the axle is set back and the fender is huge, it comes right from the front all the way back here. So it looks, it looks kind of odd. So I'll probably definitely be modifying that. So right here you can see the quarter fender. I probably have a better picture of that. Right back here are the mud flaps. So I put the stainless mud flap hangers plus the mud flap. No T-bar. When I bought this truck, it had the T-bar. Plus those big full fenders. I just don't like that look. Let's see what else. So right here you can see the drive shaft. It's two piece so it's tucked up there pretty well. Whereas on the grand hauler it's got a one piece drive shaft. So it hangs pretty low. Alright what else. Let's see I probably got some better pictures. Here's a good one. Let's zoom in a little bit. So right here you can see, see that tire? It barely clears the bumper. It's a stainless steel box end. One thing is pretty cool. So you can see the bolts right here. I like bumpers that bolt on. I just think the bolts look cool. But you can get what's called a blind mount where you don't see the bolts. It's like they bolt in from the back of the bumper and it's kind of hidden. Some people like that. I just, I don't know. I like to see the bolts. I think it looks kind of tough just like the quarter fenders. So right here are the hoge bill fenders. So I bought the Peterbilt flaps up here from a Peterbilt dealer, but Hoagebilt makes the best. You can see he's got the supports. You can get them with or without the supports. I just, I don't know. I like that look. Looks pretty rugged. You can get also half fenders, which are pretty cool. They just come up and they go between the two tires. So they stop right here. Just go forward. That's a pretty cool look too, but I don't know. To me, quarter fenders, regular mud flaps just look tough. That's a cool looking rig. It's a long combination because extended hood. It's like a 285 wheelbase with that trailer. When you're driving in tight cities, it's, it's a handful. All right, what else we got? Oh, here we go. This is from that same show. So a lot of people ask why I'm not in the videos, and that's just because I don't have anybody holding the camera for me. But here we go. There's Cloud Busted right there. You can see what I look like. So this is a cool show. It's a display show, and... It was pretty neat because there were like million dollar Bugattis, but my truck had the biggest crowd. I had the only monster truck there, but there was one mega truck. So right here's a mega truck. It's more like set up for like mud and some small jumps and stuff like that, but it's built like a 
monster truck from the 90s, like right when they went from leaf springs to coilovers and link suspension, but still had a straight frame and a steel body. It's definitely a cool truck. I like trucks like this. So it's got these skinny tires more for like mud bogs, but this guy could easily just bolt like the 66s on, no problem. What else we got? It's a little kid sitting on a tire. That's pretty cool. This was a neat picture. One of my buddies took this. I just got the front tires on. Just getting ready to jack up the back. Put the back tires on. It was cool because there was a new screw there. So aggravated assault famous. Okay, what else? This is more from that show. This is pretty cool. When I unloaded the truck, there was such a huge crowd. I had to step on it for him. So I floored it, but I let off because it was ripping up the grass. I didn't want to do that to those people. They were really nice. It's a cool picture right here. This is from a different show. This is like out in the middle of nowhere, but it's a cool picture. I just finished tiring the truck up. And if you, if you look right here, you can see the reflection of the jack and the bumper. That's pretty cool. That was a fun day. This summer, I'm going to have somebody come with me just to take videos at the shows because it's tough because it's me and one of my good friends comes with me, but we're always so busy working on the truck doing stuff like that. We can't really get videos of it. This is from one of the shows. It's pretty cool. You can see these are the cars that between the monster trucks, they just, I want to call them, they're not mega trucks, but they just do little jumps and stuff. It's pretty cool. Crowd definitely loves that stuff. Some more pictures and videos of the truck. Let's see if I can find uh, Claude Busted right there. Oh, here's my girlfriend right here. She was mad at me that day. Oh, here's my little babies right here. It's my three dogs. So right there is Kano. He's an Alaskan Malamute. And this right here, this is Jake. This is crazy. So Jake's 18 years old. He's actually like 18 in four months. That's insane. And he's a Nikita Shepherd mix. And he's like 120 pounds. And he's, if you met this dog, you'd swear he's like five, six years old. Right here is Porter. Porter's an American bully. And this picture, he just turned one year. This was his first birthday. This is a birthday picture. Let's see if I can find a better picture of him. Uh, here's, here's Kano. He's checking out the 59 Ford. That was a fun day. That's what it's all about, spending time with your family. Here's Porter. is one year old this day. This is his birthday. He's two now. He just turned two. But look at the muscles on this guy. For one year old, that's insane. You should see him now. Let's see what else. 59. This was cool right here. Every now and then I set the truck up in front of my shop. So when the kids get out of school, they come check it out. Kind of give them like a motivational thing because like, I never went to college or anything like that. It was just my mom and me. Just a single mother. I never knew my father. So if I can start a huge business, have a monster truck, I'd like to help kids do that too. So that's pretty cool. Just a bunch of pictures of the truck and stuff like that. Some Cloudbuster pictures. All right, so back to the Grand Hauler. Nice looking fuel tank. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to do with the tank yet. If I want to leave it chrome, paint the straps, or even paint the whole tank and leave the straps unpainted. That's a pretty cool look too. Right here is the step, that's the air tank. And the step, well you take this cover off on the full size truck and that's the toolbox. The other side is the battery box, but those steps, like the toolbox, battery box, step covers, they really look just like the ones you get from a company called 12 Gauge Customs. They make a lot of cool parts for rigs. Very realistic looking fifth wheel, spring loaded, even as a release right here. I guess you could probably hook a servo or something like that, or they mentioned something about a motorized kit in the manual. I don't know, I'll probably just leave it like this though. On a full size truck though, there'd be a lever right here you pull out, but it actually be on the other side. So you just pull it out to release the kingpin, push it in to lock it, but this is pretty nice. Even has simulated, or the cast into the plastic, sliding fifth wheel. So on a full size truck, you would slide this forward or back to add or decrease weight on each axle, but it's not functional, but it's there for looks, it's awesome. It's a pretty long drive shaft on a full size truck that would be a two piece or even a three piece drive shaft if the wheelbase is really long because when you have a long drive shaft like that it's prone to vibration and in a full size truck when you're pulling a lot of weight if you get a vibration in the drive line it's really hard on the drivetrain components so that'd be pretty cool if 
Somebody made a kit, I don't know, maybe I'll make one to make it a two-piece drive shaft. Taking a look at the axles is pretty cool, very realistic. You got leaf sprung suspension. Most full-size trucks have airbag suspension, but it's still awesome. It's pretty cool, there's a little drive shaft connecting the two, so I wasn't sure if these were real drive axles or if only one drove the truck and the other one was kind of like a dummy axle, but no, it's cool, it's got both axles drive the truck. So now for the things that I thought I want to say were bad, but just what I didn't really like that I would have did a little differently. So first thing are the seats. If you take a look right here, these seats glue to a bracket and the bracket screws to this plate. I would prefer to have the seats screw to the bracket from the bottom side and then have the brackets attached to the plate. That would make more sense because I'm not a big fan of gluing parts together, but I don't know, that's just me. But I guess the glue that they have today is really strong stuff, so probably won't be a problem, but I'd rather have it attached more securely. Other thing I don't really like is the battery box. A 2S hard case lipo will not fit in there, so I'll definitely have to modify that or just get a smaller battery. Probably take a ride out to RC Madness, but luckily, good old Max Illa slides right in. Look at that. It's like a glove. Another thing I'm not really a big fan of is the axle set back kind of far. In some full-size trucks that come with a set back axle, it's nice because they turn pretty sharp, but in a truck like my Peterbilt, axles far forward. If you take a look at the space between the tire and the bumper, and that's a pretty big bumper. It's a box end bumper, but normally this edge stops like in the middle. So that's a lot of distance between there. And it looks kind of funny. It's a long nose truck, but it just looks weird. Like the fenders look too big because the axle's back kind of far, but that's a kind of an easy fix. I could just modify the leaf spring a little bit. And if you take a look at the shock angle, the shock angle is forward slightly, which is opposite. It should be going back because on a leaf spring suspension, one side is a fixed bushing, the other side is a shackle. So as the suspension compresses, this axle actually moves back, even worsening that angle. So I could just modify the spring, move this whole axle forward. It'll put a better shock geometry. And also, the steering linkage right here is at a pretty steep angle, so moving the axle forward would definitely be okay. So right there you can see with the body on, the matte black body looks pretty cool, but I want to paint this thing to look like my full-size truck, so I'll be changing the color. Right there is the grill. Let's stay. Alright, it doesn't want to stay. But anyway, when I first looked at the box, I thought this thing was definitely Peterbilt, but after assembling the kit and looking at all the parts, it's kind of like they tried to please everybody, and I get why they did that, but there's a little bit of Peterbilt, a little bit of Freightliner, and a little bit of Kenworth in this whole thing, so that's cool because if someone buys this kit and they're a fan of Peterbilts, such as myself, I like fine things, they're going to see the Peterbilt, and if they have a Kenworth or Freightliner, they're going to see those features in the truck. So I get it's kind of trying to please everybody, then you modify it how you like it. But definitely an awesome kit. If you're into these big rigs, you've got to get one of these things. There's so many cool accessories like trailers and everything, but you could spend a lot of money on these trucks. So just be aware of that. Anyway, I'll take this thing for a little spin. Okay, so right now I just got the battery sitting in there. It's, it doesn't really fit in the battery box, but it's okay. I'm not going to go fast. I'm not going to take any sharp turns. So I figured for its first run, a good test run would be to try and mimic the very first job I ever did when I first got my CDL commercial driver's license. I started a trucking company. The first job I ever got, the guy had me back in a crazy spot. So I tried to recreate that in my basement. I got my little weight room right here. So I just kind of laid a bunch of weights out on the floor. Check it out. So first I'll come through here. Got this machine right here. And I got, I set up all these weights to be kind of like curbs or guardrails that were there. So I got to come around here right through here, around like this, and I was doing this with the trailer. It was the very first job I ever did, it was insane. And I had to back into a spot right there. So at first I thought I would just come around and hook it in, but the trailer wouldn't fit. So I ended up having to back, back out like this, come through here, around like this, go right here, pull forward so it was like straight back, and then go back in, and then pull out, and then back home. So I'm gonna try and recreate that. I'll turn this bad boy on. Right 
Right now I got it in a slow setting. Oh, gotta back up a little bit. I don't even know what gear I'm in. It's a three speed, but since it's the first run, I'll just leave it the way it is. So I had to go around here. Oh, gotta back up a little bit. Back up again. Oh, a little touchy. Oh, took out a quarter fender. All right, so maybe this doesn't turn as tight as a full-size truck would, but I probably already would have jacked off the trailer a while ago. Come around here. You always want to turn as wide as you can to make sure you have room. If there was a trailer right now, it'd probably be at a 45 degree angle. So I remember when I first did this job, my plan was to come through here. Oh, a little too fast. I got it back up. Turning radius isn't too good. And one thing about my Peterbilt, it turns pretty sharp for such a big truck. So my first, my original plan when I did this job in real life was to back in right there, but there just wasn't enough room right here. So I remember I ended up pulling way forward like this. Backed up like that. Go way forward. As far as I could go. I set this way over here because there was like a wall right there. It's funny, when you do these truck driving jobs, everybody tells you, oh yeah, you got plenty of room. When you get there, there's like no room at all. I remember this part when I did this job in real life, it was crazy. This is my first ever truck driving job. I had the trailer jackknife, everybody's out there watching, that's the worst. Whenever you're driving a truck, you always wanna try and make it so you can do a straight back whenever possible. So I pull way forward like this. Uh-oh. Stuck. So see right now on a full-size truck, you'd have what's called a power divider and a locked axle. So this wouldn't happen. But don't get me wrong, I've definitely had my full-size truck stuck a couple times. Alright, and there it is. Backed in. Definitely going to be fun with the trailer. So pretty soon I'll have a trailer for this thing and I've got more videos coming. So. Stay tuned for that. Take care. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell. See you next time. Bye.